Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. It got dark out really quick if you're watching this video. I was getting ready to do the intro for this, and it's cloudy out. Now, the, the sun doesn't even go down for like another 20 minutes, but it is dark. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Today on the show, I am talking to an animator. Uh, I met him online, and we uh, uh, he contacted me about something else, and we just started talking, and I was like, hey, I'd love to talk to you on the show. We've been following each other for quite a while. He's done a lot of work for uh, commercials. He actually works for a company right now that he does um, animated things for, for some of their promotional materials, but he created some uh, design and animation artwork for a documentary that's on Netflix right now called Behind the Curve, which is a, a documentary about flat earthers. And I guess it's on, it's on Netflix right now. I had no idea that he had done this. So it was all fun. Everything was great talking to him, just finding out more stuff about him, where he studied, why he decided he wanted to go into animation in general. Um, we have a talk about the different places he studied, one of them being here in Wisconsin. He actually studied in Milwaukee, but then he also studied in Vancouver, which makes me ask him what's the weather like in Vancouver because, like I said before, it's all dark and gray out. So I was like, is it better there? Anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there, but we do talk about uh, just about what he's done, his inspiration behind why he does his animation, the types of animation he's done. There's a few... Uh, he has kind of a comedy background. He's connected with a lot of people from Second City down in Chicago, and that's why he moved out to California. All of this gets covered. It's it just the whole way that the thing progressed and, and the way the story lays out, all just because I had a conversation with him online. It was really cool. So you can check out more of his work at his website, which is uh, Mike Lloyd. No, wait, likemoid.com. That's right. He, he mixes up the words, and I thought that was kind of entertaining. So you can check out his stuff there. Uh, so here is... Today's episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Mike Lloyd. I'm an animator and an illustrator. So where am I talking to you from today? Uh, I'm in Los Angeles. I live in the San, San Fernando Valley, um, oh. kind of near uh, where where like Universal Studios and Warner Brothers are in that in that area near North Hollywood. Okay, like like I have any uh, idea. Where <laughs> those are. I, yeah. I've actually never even been to California. I'm super jealous of that. That's it's one of the few places I've never been. So what what do you do? Uh, what do you do out there in California? What, what did you did you originally start out there, or did you end up there? Um, well, I originally started in. Uh, I grew up in the south suburbs of Chicago, and have just always. Uh, you know, been a been an an illustrator. I, I I love to draw cartoons pretty much exclusively. Yeah. So uh, I came out here a few years ago. My wife and I got married, and we all, we both wanted to, um, you know, see a different place and then see what it was like to live somewhere else. I had lived in New York before, and she went to school in in Boston. So we felt like we had like the the Northeast covered, and we knew some people in LA. So we decided to give it a shot. And uh, we moved out here. It's nice. Uh, it's you it's just really... did it because you knew people out there, or did you have a job lined up? No, both of us. Um, both of us moved out here and worked remotely for our companies in Chicago for a while. Really, doing what? Um, so I was I was at a marketing firm in Chicago. Okay. Um, it was it it was an okay job, but it was it was mostly like I was doing graphic design, building like. You know, like the banners that everybody gets mad at when they accidentally scroll over and they take over your – that was – I was making those for a I've, while. I've been there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I worked remotely for them for a few months uh, while, while we found our footing out here. You know, hopped from freelance job to freelance job when we first landed and, and again, doing marketing emails and stuff. But um, then – I got back. I really wanted to get back into character animation, which is where I started to begin with. I went to Vancouver Film School uh, straight out of high school. Okay. And I studied classical animation there, so drawn, hand drawn animation. Um, Around and so what I time really, was this when you went there? 
Uh, it was 01, 02. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I graduated in, in 02 and then uh, moved back to Chicago and worked at an animation studio there for a while called Calabash Animation. Those people are great. They're such a such an awesome studio. What and now this was also during the time of uh, Flash was really starting to get its legs. There was no YouTube yet. And so right. SWF files were a way to make very, very small animated cartoons. And that was how you put it out there. You actually embedded the Flash animation. And so what kind of cartoons were they doing? So so Calabash um is a traditional animation studio. So we we okay. actually did um we I was working on with them on like Keebler commercials, hmm. Tricks commercials. I Lucky don't know Charm. why I instantly thought you were doing internet animation. You were doing like stuff for broadcast. Yeah, and okay. we did some Flash stuff as well and 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 I worked in Flash quite a bit and still you know, still do I mean animate now, whatever. Right, Doesn't whatever they decide that. to call it, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, we did, we did, I mean, even at that point, I think they've since switched to digital, but we were still all on paper for the most part. Coloring, ink and paint was in, was digital, but, okay. but I was even like a cleanup artist and, and tracing everything onto, onto paper. So, um, Los Angeles, uh, w since I've been here, um, I guess what what sort of sprung me back into character animation. My my wife had um a comedy group in Chicago, a, a sketch comedy group, really? and yeah, th there's like a huge sketch comedy scene in Chicago. It's actually really, yeah. <laughs> I'm aware. It's like half of <laughs> half of the people that are on TV are part of that. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so most of our friends here, uh, we 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 have through that scene. So we we oh. actually. Uh, when we moved out here, the people that we knew um, were sort of from that that world, and so we have a lot of friends that are comedians, uh, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so she had a sketch comedy group, and she was like, "We should do an animated short together." Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I I you know jumped into After Effects and figured out how to do character animation again, and it's it's a super rough short, but it was fun to make. And, you know, I got to do it with, it was my girlfriend at the time, but now wife. And, mm -hmm. um, what was the animation? It was a sketch. Um, basically they like, it was sort of like inception, but they all like went into one of, one of their dreams. So it was sort of half live action. And then when they went into the dream, that was all animated. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's called Drew's Tumblr Dreams Together. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so that sort of got me back into it. And then when we got out here, I booked a uh, an, uh, an animated music video, uh, which was super fun to do. And they just they just gave me carte blanche. They said, you know, listen to the song, come up with a with a story, uh, and and do a little short film that goes along with the with the song. And that was great. That was an awesome experience. How did you hook that up? You know, it was just a band that I was a fan of and I had, um, uh, I had drawn some posters for them just, just as fan art and, okay. and they liked what I had done. And so they asked me to do something for their album. Oh, and you didn't yeah, really was... know them at all. You were just a fan of theirs. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, the band is called Vandevere. Um, sounds familiar they... for some reason. They've broken up since, but uh, but yeah, their music is great. Uh, the the songwriter for them was is a guy named Mark Charles, uh, and he's doing solo stuff now. Okay, nice. And then so you moved out there. You were you had done this animate two animated videos. First of all, you said you busted out After Effects and did it. Now, um, it never. So I started out uh, when I actually started doing animation. I didn't really get into it until I got Flash. I got like whatever, like Flash eight or flash four. I don't even remember. It's one of the earliest versions. I still have it. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, it, I learned how to do animation in that one, but then I had other people going like they did stuff in after effects and I'm like, that's video editing software. So how did you jump from doing hand-drawn animation into, I'm going to jump into after effects and create character animation that way. Like, what were you doing? Were you still hand drawing it or were you using like, how are you arranging this? So, um, Basically, after I went to animation school and worked at Calabash for a little while, I, wor I worked there from like 
O2 to O5 ish. Um, but in the middle of that, I sort of decided, you know, Calabash was really the only animation studio or drawn animation studio in Chicago. And that's what I was trained to do. And it was sort of like fading out. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I felt like I was in an industry, I had like chosen an industry that was sort of on its last legs. So I needed to learn the digital side. And I ended up going to um, to college. I, I went to college at Marquette University in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. just, you know, down the street from you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> down the street. Well, an hour and a half down the street. But yeah, I get you. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so um so I did that and I learned, um, you know, just like digital editing and, and motion graphics and things like that. Um, and a lot of like live action shooting and things like that hmm. as well, uh, which has come in handy quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so then after that, I my career sort of took a, a, you know, a turn into motion graphics. So I was using After Effects a ton for motion graphics. And that's when, so that's why, you know, I, it, it's a lot easier if you're a one man band to, to sort of put everything together in after effects than it is to like hand draw on, hand draw each frame. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, I just felt most comfortable in after effects and, and I'm, I still am hand drawing a lot of it, but in Photoshop, I'll, I'll use the Wacom. Uh, I've got a Cintiq right here. And it's one um, where you can actually see the screen on it and it's not the, it's on the table and you're looking up at the screen type one or do you, are, are, it, it, it's the, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an external monitor that I draw directly onto, okay. which, which makes a huge difference. I've, yes. I've had the, the ones I, I never really got the hang of the ones that just sit on the desk and you like approximate where, where the mouth, the mouse goes. I couldn't. I could I could never really get the hang of that. So having the Cintiq has really been a huge change. Yeah. I have the one that uh, is on the table and I've still had it. I've had it for as long as I've had the flesh. I don't know why I don't upgrade, but I still have it and I can do it, but it kind of, the the only way I can describe it is like, you can do it. Even if you get it, it still feels like you're kind of, have you, have you ever just been... <laughs> I'm thinking the best way to describe it is, uh, it, you know, you're kind of tipsy and the room starts spinning. So everything just kind of seems like it's leaning to the left. That's what it's like. It's like, I can draw it, but it's like, why does it seem like everything's just, it just seems like it's kind of bending to the left or something like that. It's, right. you can't draw straight. Or you like put the pen down and you're like, that is not at all where I thought it was going to land. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, everything's just a little bit off and you got to over, you kind of over direct Anyway, well, yeah. and you you've said that you you draw your comic on your phone, right? I have, I have. I started out drawing it on my phone, and then I got a tablet, a Galaxy Tab. Uh, so I draw on that now. But when I first started out, what I would do, yeah, I would take my phone and I would just draw uh, on the actual screen size, and then copy the, or save that, and then put them into little panels on an actual layout that looks like a, a four panel comic. And I, right. so that way I could zoom in and I'd have control, but, and I was like, I'm really getting the hang of this. And then I went back to getting the tablet and actually had a pen. And I was just like, geez, this is so much easier. <laughs> there yeah. was, it would just take so long <laughs> doing yeah, it the but other these way. Touch screens. I mean, there's, they're, they're everywhere now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it makes a world of difference when it you're, really does. when you're, when you're doing like, I mean, I still draw a lot on paper, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, you know, if I'm doing a, if I need to turn something around pretty quick, there's, there's nothing like working on the, on the Cintiq. How long honest. does it take you to do like, say, w first of all, what would you say is the average amount of animation that you do for a job? Like in, in by average amount, I mean like the time, like, is it a three minute spot, a 30 second spot? Like what's the average time you do? Um, well, so so uh, right now I have a nine to five that I do at a, a company called Watch Gang. It's like an online watch seller. Um, really? Yeah, and it's it's super fun. Um, they, they they you know basically they they get great deals on watches and um, have like a membership base that they sell to. Uh, so so they're able to buy in bulk and get really great deals. And and it's mm. it's super cool. So I do a lot of marketing materials for them and I'll do um we try to keep our videos to like 
within a minute and two minutes okay. because it's hard to keep you know it's hard to keep people's attention even for that long quite yeah. honestly so like if we can get it under a minute um, but it's you know a lot of times I'm explaining a product that we're that we're putting out or something like that so if you really want to explain anything of substance you have to give it a little bit more time mm -hmm. but um, yeah, we we try to keep them as short as possible. So uh, right around a minute, if we can hit that, that's good. Okay, and I'm sure there's some research that you guys have done behind that. And like, uh, are you involved in that too, or are you just doing the? Do they give you a script and then you do that, or what? Uh, well, I mean, like, I, I I write a lot of the scripts, but but oh. the um, you know, the there's we've got writers as well, and we've got a producer. Um, but we get all of our direction from our from our um, um, CMO our, our creative our, our, our what the chief marketing officer mm -hmm. and he, he sort of directs us and says you know this is what we need um, you know right now like he'll he'll sort of direct and say how we're trying to communicate uh, our messaging for the company or if we need something that's going to help member services side or things like that yeah uh, and then and then I also make um, marketing materials that go in the boxes with the watches. So, you know, we'll send out coupon codes or whatever. Okay. And I, little illustrations or graphic design for that stuff too. Wow. All right. So, so that's, and then what kind of freelance stuff are you doing or are you not doing freelance stuff? That seems pretty involved. That's why I ask. I don't know what you're doing that, or if you're just uh, doing no, it for yourself. Um, no, Watch Gang's pretty good about keeping it nine to five. Okay. Uh, so, so I, um, yeah, I do a lot of stuff on the side. I do a lot of stuff like in the evenings when I'm, when I'm not, you know, working on, on watch gang stuff. And, uh, so since I started at watch gang, I've actually done, I've done animation on two different documentary films. Um, you know, uh, you, I'm sure you've seen, I'm sure you've watched a documentary where they like slip in animation to like yes. fill out or like illustrate somebody's anecdote um, or like show how a science experiment works kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, that kind of stuff that I was doing on those. Um, so that, that was the first one was called behind the curve and it's a documentary about like the flat earther movement um, and sort of like it's about, you know, what, what is happening in our world that's creating this culture and how is it perpetuating itself? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really it's they they try to take a pretty even-handed approach to it, and not talk down, but it's but it is you know it's it's sort of a strange. I mean you know it's a very strange subculture uh, where people are believing in conspiracy theories rather than just you know going. Yeah, I don't know. They they they. Yeah. I, I, don't I love know what, how you're trying to be nice about this. Yeah, <laughs> but I get what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> so, so there. So, um, my one of my friends, one of my good friends, uh, uh, Joe Quizala, introduced me to his good friend, who is Daniel Clark, and he he's the director of that movie, and um, we worked. So, so he had basically like four or five minutes of of screen time that he wanted to fill out with animated sequences, and so I had never done anything like that before. And we just collaborated and bounced back and forth. And, um, yeah, and he and his team were awesome to work with. And, and we've since worked together on, on uh, Joe Quizal as a comedian. And he, he, he put together a sketch series, a sketch comedy series, and we worked together on that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I do a lot of freelance stuff on the, on the side. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, you seem to really enjoy doing it. Like even you said that your company that you work for is really good about your nine to five. And then you said at night when you're free and you're not working on watchdog stuff. And it's like, so you're clearly going like, I really want to do this thing, you know, and I've, I've had jobs like that where it's not that they're going, you still have to do this or, you know, the deadline. It's like sometimes you'd go home and go, I'm really thinking about this thing that I've been working on. I, I, I used to have that at my job. And then I went into software development and I hated it. But um, <laughs> I wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. But uh, it, in, and I actually had a job at an agency, much much like you. I got hired. Um, first of all, I was happy to hear when you in Chicago, and I used to use this example all the time. Like when I worked at that agency, um, 
I would be like, God, if I could only work from home because all my stuff is set up here, but I'd have to go into their place and their computer didn't have half of what I did. Their internet was bad. And again, this was like, uh, I want to say mid 2000s. And um, I'd be like, I can work from home. I'm like, the stuff I work on technically doesn't exist here. Like it exists on a server somewhere, you know, like I don't need to be here. It doesn't yeah. need to be accessed here. And they're like, no, you got it. Madison was very ass in seats, but they all were like, they wanted to be uh, technology based. They all wanted us. I was hired because I was the internet guy, because I knew, because I knew about the internet. That was right. why I was hired. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> because they were like going, I, I, the, basically I got the job because I explained to the owner what Twitter was. Because he didn't know. And Twitter had just become public. and Or no, not even Twitter. Facebook had just become public. And he wanted to learn how to use Twitter and didn't even know what Facebook was yet. That whole thing. Yeah. And so I explained it to him and I got hired. And basically, I was the guy that knew about the internet. So I had to know everything about it. But then I explained remote working. And they're like, nobody does that. And I'm like, no. every In Chicago, people don't actually have offices they pay for. They, they work from home and they have an agency where everybody works together. I mean, I was talking about a freelance agency, but still, and then you said you were working remotely and you even moved to California and you were still working for a place in Chicago. Yeah. And, and that was more, I, I had worked at the, the, at the, the company in Chicago, I had worked in the office for like four years at oh, that yeah. point. So, so then when I was like, Hey, I want to move to Los Angeles, they didn't have anybody to replace me yet. And they were like, Hey, could you maybe work remotely for a little while? Right while we find our, and, and it worked out great for both of us. Yeah. And the other thing too, is this was, and I hate to say that's the beauty of what happened this year, but let's say, let's spin a positive on this yeah, year. The silver, the silver lining of 2020. Yeah. Is everybody realized like, oh, what the people have been saying is you can work from home. I mean, and they were pretty good about, about letting people work remotely if they wanted to, yeah. uh, to, be, to begin with, but we worked in an office and they were super good about like, they sent everybody home before there were even any orders they were just like everybody just be safe don't mm -hmm. get sick and That's and cool. let everybody work from home to begin with um and it's been nice it's been good i do miss my coworkers yeah. uh, you know it's it, it's it, it it's pretty isolating you feel and now like you know i you know you used to just sort of chat with people as you ran into them but now it's only like if i need to work with somebody on something then i end up talking to them mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I, you know, you you miss the one-on-one -on -one interaction. And, I mean, there still is, too, the separation or the weird drive to work, as annoying as it can be and about how it's like, oh, it's going to take me forever to get home in this traffic. But there's that weird time period where you can, like, listen to a podcast or, you know, a book on audio or something, you know, <laughs> while you're on your way home. And yeah. And it's a nice little separation. Now it's just kind of like... Uh, I walked over to the couch in just under five seconds. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> not a not a ton of time for the mental separation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, what kind of what kind of uh, style would you say your animation is? I looked at a lot of the things that you did, and you've got some stuff that's very graphical based, and then you've got some stuff that's I want to say Disney esque. You know, the kind of like you know, rounded corners and everything. What would you say your actual preferred style? Cause I know you have to adapt for each project, but what's your yeah. preferred style? So yeah, I think I, I really like to take each project and sort of develop it out from the, from the source and, and mm -hmm. see like what, like recently I've been working a ton in, in just pens. I, I, I love working on, uh, like with, um with these guys, the, the microns, the Pigma microns, you know these? Yeah. They're, you know, the, I just, I just really love getting into like the fine details and like, you know, all sorts of like different shading methods, hatching and all that stuff. Yeah. And so, so for my illustrations recently, I've been doing that kind of stuff, but for animation, you know, it's usually easier to, to give it a, a, a less, involved style give it a little bit more graphic feel um i'm a huge like uh gendy tartakovsky fan oh nice you know uh samurai jack and and he's great yeah i want to say the samurai jack thing uh and especially even now what's it the primal or is it just primal primal yeah okay well the this is where i was just like this is amazing what he does the fact that he now has two series that have 
no actual dialogue. Like, how was he timing this thing out? You know, that that's what I want to know. Man, they the premiere of Primal, they they released it in like some independent theaters. It was like one of the last things I did before everything got shut down. Oh, okay. And I went to this theater and I I just went by myself because I don't really know anybody who's like really into cartoons that much. Uh-huh. So I, I went and I watched this uh they they played like the first five or six episodes as if it was a film. Nice. Um, and it was, it was just stunning that that series is so cool and, and remarkable. It's, I, it's, it's hard to believe he's able to like get away with it almost, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's like a very violent caveman series about like a caveman and a dinosaur. It sounds insane. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's super fun. But and, there, wasn't there actually kind of a Hanna Barbera cartoon that was somewhat like that? It was, it was like a, maybe not even a caveman, but like some sort of jungle man who had a tiger or a dinosaur or something. Maybe I'm making this up in my head. Never mind. <laughs> masters of the universe. I realized as I was saying that I'm like, he man had cringer. Yes. Or not cringer, but battle cat. But you know, it, and also, as you can see now, I would have been the person that likes cartoons that would have went to go see this with you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. And well, and the whole thing too, is the way that he does it is he does like the um, anime style where the moving backgrounds and then the slow pans are, the, but then, there's still more motion to it, but at the same time, would you say that it's actually limited animation or do you think he's doing full animation? I would say, I, I would call it, it's pretty limited. Okay. Um, Just stylized. You know, he, he does a lot of like really strong pose to pose stuff where it's, he'll hit, hit, hit his, his opening mark and then like quickly move into like the, the finished pose and it's, and it hits so hard. I mean, that's sort of why, cause he, he'll, you know, it'll be like a dinosaur rips another dinosaur's jaw off. Right. And it like, and then the only thing that's animating will be like the blood and, yes. and it, we- and it feels like dramatic movement, but really there's not a ton of movement involved. It's really, yeah, he, he, he gets a lot of sort of bang for his, his buck in, in with like his resources. He's I, I, cause I think it's a pretty small team that makes that show. Really? Yeah, I guess it I'm, probably is. Yeah. I mean, they usually were. I, I mean, I know he worked, uh, the story behind him was like he worked with the in-betweeners in Russia or something like that when he was doing stuff for Cartoon Network, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've never heard that, but, but oh. yeah. I th- I want to say I have, but now that you question that, I'm like. I No, I, I just had never up. heard it. I, it, <laughs> it doesn't sound implausible. It's, uh, but, you know, and, and it's also, he was doing the Hotel Transylvania movies. Uh, oh, for a while, right, and those are fun, but but it's cool to see him back to something, yeah, a little different, a little more outside the box. Yeah, he made the money, but, and they got to do the passion project. I mean, that's that's right. how you do it. The the uh, what is it? The Orson Welles version of it. Like he used to basically, he would be in anything that anybody paid him for to help pay for his actual projects that nobody was going to go see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so what would you say your method while you're doing, when you're drawing this stuff, I'm actually curious, we're talking about the timing and all that kind of stuff here. What's your process for creating, like, do you start out with storyboards? Do you uh, do sketches? Like what's, what's your actual process doing these animations? Yeah. So most of the time, if I'm doing um, an animated piece, well, it it depends on how quick the turnaround has to be. So if I'm doing something like a marketing video for watch gang, I'll write out the script and do the voiceover and then and then throw um just throw it straight into animation. Okay. Cuz I cuz I know exact I'm, I I've been there for a few years and I know what there's what style they're looking for and I can sort of pretty safely guess and and make it so that it can be adjusted but but it's it still, you know, moves along in a pretty good clip. But if I'm working on these documentaries and I've never worked with the guy before or if if it's if it's a a totally new project, then I'll do storyboards. Um and I usually do instead of storyboarding onto a sheet of paper, I'll storyboard directly into animatic. Okay. So I'll I'll sketch pretty roughly and then I'll throw it into a video sequence with the the sound that they give me. Um, so that they can sort of see how it's moving and see, see 
like how it'll end up and time out in in the video itself and then uh, from there I'll clean up the characters and clean up the background and recently how I've been doing the the animation for the characters has been with um, so I, I'm still using After Effects for the most part I design everything in Photoshop or Illustrator um, do you bring them in as objects or something that you can move around or how are you doing the actual animations so if you save a PSD or an AI file uh, and you bring that into After Effects, you can just bring it in as a composition. Okay. And and it will preserve all of your layers and folders. And especially if you do it in, in Illustrator, um, you know, it preserves the vectors. And so you can zoom in as close as you want on those and right. it, it'll preserve the quality. And it's, you know, vector files are so light, it doesn't really bog down After Effects very much. So I like actually... I'll design a lot of the characters that I use in Illustrator so that I can so that I can zoom in on them really easily. So, but what I'm saying is, like, are you doing the actual like you will draw out an arm and then like have you know the top part of the arm, the lower part of the arm, and will those be a new folder and that's the composition that you can bring in or? Yeah, sort of. So, so, um, yeah, I'll design sort of a puppet. Uh, or several puppets for each character so that, you know, I've got like a three-quarter and I've got a, a profile and a front-facing, back-facing, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Depending on how much I, how much movement, this is like for a main character, I would, I would design all of those directions so that I can turn the character around if I need to. And then recently I've been using um, a plugin called Joysticks and Sliders. <laughs> you ever heard of that? No, but I love what it's called. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's super great, and basically you can so you you create a virtual joystick, and you create like an extreme right and left up and down position, and like the neutral position in the center, okay. and then you move the joystick around, and it appears as though the like if you animate a face, it you can make it go like, you know, all oh. just by moving this joystick around, and it. It, it saves a ton of time and then sliders you can you can program sliders to be like a blink or like mouth mouth open close kind of things okay wow. um, and it's really it's super simple to use um, yeah I was gonna say how much is the process to set up to use it or is it just kind of it, you pick your points and there it runs from there I mean depending on how many layers you're using it it can get a little complicated but it's just five keyframes it's your neutral extreme right extreme left extreme up and extreme down okay and then you highlight all of those and you say make a joystick and then it create it like you know does all the programming behind the scenes and you right. don't really know what it's doing and then it creates a little joystick and you you can move it around and it works great huh okay i like that um yeah, and I and e so then you bring in each layer as as or each each piece of the of the character as its own layer, mm -hmm. and you can sort of manipulate everything that way. Okay, and the reason I ask, I mentioned before that I've been using, uh, still using Flash Four because it's the only one that I paid for, and I'm not going to go buy another version. But I'm able to run it. But I know that one day I'm going to open it, or one day it's going to be like this doesn't work anymore, or you know something's wrong with this, and it's so I've been trying to adjust. But the way that I, I just remember I create a library, and then I can use the pieces, and I don't have to redraw them every time. I'll hand draw them, scan them in, fill it out, and then I have all the objects. But right. I've been trying to use like Blender lately to do animation because they recently have really been pushing 2D animation. But yeah, I don't want to hand draw the damn thing every time. <laughs> that's Blender's Blender's sort of trying to move in on harmony almost, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Have you yeah. And that's that's all fine. Um <laughs> I mean and, and it, it works. It works. Uh it's just um and I, I've I've used that stuff before and I, I like it, but it's you know, I'm I'm most comfortable in an after effects in Photoshop environment so that's sort of what i stick to yeah well and that's uh, i will go right like right now i'm trying them all out but i want something where i can just go here's my library and i can do like what you're saying where i've done all the work here's the character i, I know how to animate it i just don't want to hand draw it every time which i mean i don't mind hand drawing it but i'd like to do something where it doesn't take me tons of time whereas i can just go this is a limited animation you know and and i'm cool with that but everything i've tried so far it, 
here's the thing. The tutorials on YouTube, I don't need to know how animation works every time I go to see how... It's like, I don't need to see the bouncing ball animation every time you go, here's how I use After Effects to animate. Now, this is a bouncing ball. No, show me a proper way to use it to make cartoons. You know, right, yeah. I get that there are beginners out there, but every single... Like, I have yet to find one that tells me the thing that I'm talking to you about right now. <laughs> it's like, I want to bring in a character library and animate that. <laughs> yeah. Flash is sort of more tedious when it, when it comes in to like bringing in libraries and stuff, mm -hmm. but, but after effects is super simple. You drag your PSD and, and just say like create a composition instead of a, a layer. Yeah. And it brings in everything and preserves all the properties. It's great. Okay. Now, how did you, you said you didn't go to school for this type of stuff. You went to school for hand-drawn animation. How did you end up learning how to use this stuff? My first thing out of, out of high school was classical animation. That was Vancouver Film School. But then once I sort of realized that I needed a little bit of a backup career option, um, then I went to Marquette and I studied um, what was called then, it was, uh, it was broadcast and electronic communication, uh, but it's now called digital media. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, that makes a little bit more sense. And that's where I, um, they didn't really have classes in this stuff, but it gave me, they have a, a wonderful like lab and studio setup. Uh, so, so I just, you know, went into the, the computer labs and just learned whatever software they had available. And that was sort of how I spent college. I, I worked for their uh, student run television station MUTV and wait, what was it called? NUTV and MU MUTV Marquette okay. University Television. Oh, yeah. There you go, clever. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> we um, so we would we would broadcast TV for like three out three or four hours a night, mm -hmm. and so uh, every show needed graphics made, and so I would make graphics for a bunch of different shows every night, and and you know when you're in it and you're doing it for that that amount of time you're you just sort of get it so that's where i learned photoshop in animation school but then i learned after effects and premiere and avid and um yeah a ton of different software in in broadcast school just by doing it there weren't no you had no classes we had no we had a bunch of classes but, okay but they just weren't like technical they were more like theory classes and like um you know they would give us assignments where it was like you know, make a documentary short about, you know, a short subject documentary about something on campus. Yeah. And then we would have to figure out how to do it. And they gave us all the resources, but then we didn't really have classes on the technical assets. But it, that worked out great for me because I would rather just sort of, you know, jump in and learn on my own instead of right. instead of sitting through a PowerPoint presentation about what menu does what in Photoshop, you know? Yeah. And there's something to be said about, yeah. When they go like, here is how this process works. And you just follow through it. Like you're doing like, say a, a cooking recipe and you'll be like, at the end, it's like, yes, I baked a cake. And it's like, do you know why you baked a cake? And it's like, cause I followed the recipe. No, it's like knowing the, why these things come together to create a crust, how you, why you have to do this to the apples to make them so that they work inside of a, oh, I said a cake. I'm in a pie. Right. <laughs> but you can put you apples in a cake. Yeah, it's just as good. I'm sure you can. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying is it's like, you know, you can go through the process, but you don't really understand it till you go in and break some stuff and go, why did that break? Oh, because it needs this to do this. And that's why this, and like, how come this thing that I'm doing here all of a sudden disappears? Oh, because this layer is actually on top of it where visually you're going, what the hell's a layer? And then it's anyway, it's, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm, I don't know why I'm explaining it to you. Uh <laughs> my, my first uh, experience with Photoshop and Illustrator, I was in like high school and they had a computer lab and one of my friends like, I don't know, we were doing some sort of stencil sort of project for a, for a graphic arts class. And, and we were all doing it by hand. And then one of my friends was like, I'm going to do this in the computer. And he did it in illustrator. And we were like, well, you're cheating. <laughs> this is cheating. <laughs> and then we all sort of, um, we bootlegged that we burned the discs from the, from the, the, the school computer lab and took them home. And I, that was what I used 
basically through college was the stuff that I that I you know borrowed from high school. Right. I don't know. I mean, it it was like game changing. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you when you're when you're learning to do things all by hand, and then all of a sudden you you go into these computer programs, and it's like something that took you hours to do by hand is taking you like minutes. It's it's a total game changer. Yeah. And then, of course, later on, even to get it into print, you had to convert whatever you hand drew into a digital thing so the printer could – there was that weird period where you had to put everything on those big zip disks. Right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> those cracked me up. Um, it, yeah, and it, my, first, my first connection with that, while you were saying that, I remember the only reason I found out about it was because I got a printer, and the printer had a – disc and it had like the most basic version of Corel Draw that that came with it to show you like here you can draw stuff and print it out on your printer and I'm going what's this and I realized I could draw and I had no idea what vector art was and I remember going ooh these lines are so clean like how's that working like I didn't even know the difference between pixel art and vector art yet right and yeah. I'm printing this stuff out going that's amazing yeah <laughs> Corel or like <laughs> I started animating in um um, Adobe Image Ready. Mm. Did you did you ever use that? I it's it, I think so. It's it was essentially just. Um, do you know the motion tools in Photoshop? You've, you've got like a timeline where you've got like an individual frame. That was Im- Adobe Image Ready. It was like a completely separate okay program. And I was like, I was trying to figure out how to use this thing, and I was like, this is really strange. I don't really understand why. It does what it does, and it would only export as a GIF, and and it was right, yeah. But uh, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it totally, totally changed uh, how I like thought about things. Yeah. So what? Why did you decide that you wanted to be an animator or make cartoons? Like, what what led you in that direction? Um, I mean, I I've sort of always wanted to do it. I, I mean, I remember my, my family's like a Disney family. We would go to Disney world when we, when I was a kid, um, okay. a bunch, I mean, we'd go every, probably every, every other year or so. Wow. Brag. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we were doing okay, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so we, but we would, we would go a lot and, Back then, uh, at MGM Studios, they had a tour that you would take through the through the animation studio, and they they had like these huge windows, and you'd look into the studio and watch the animators working on their next feature. Hmm. So you'd go in, and 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 you know we we saw people working on the Lion King, and Damn. or like. Aladdin and stuff like that and and I'm look I'm looking at these guys and they've got like action figures on their desks and they're drawing cartoons and I was like they're getting paid to be here at Disney World yeah <laughs> um and so I was like I got it that that's like all I ever wanted to do and I um my grandfather was an architect um and so we just always had drafting tools around um and I had like a big metal or a big wooden plank that I would lay on the floor in my bedroom and, and just lay down and, and draw all the time and read comics. And um, so, yeah, I just always wanted to do it. My dad uh, is an accountant. So like the exact opposite. I was going to say. <laughs> he's like, he doesn't, but, but he was always super supportive and, and, you know, we'd be watching like we'd be watching sports or whatever, and and he would he like some animated graphic would flash up on the screen, and he'd be like, "You could do that. That could be your job." <laughs> <laughs> um, and and it was it was really great. And so, at one point, he had a client. Um, he did he did like payroll for a company called Star Tunes Animation oh. in in the south suburbs of Chicago and they did Animaniacs and Tiny Toons and Freakazoid and okay. all these all these cartoons and so when I was in high school um he he basically like asked asked them if they needed an intern and I and so I really started going there after school when I was in high school and just did whatever they needed me to do and most of the time it was just like photocopying storyboards and stuff but every once in a while they'd have me like you know 
clean line of a background or something like that. And oh wow! And I was like, this is great. This is like a, I'm I'm you made it. <laughs> yeah. So so then I talked to the guy who ran that studio, John McClanahan, and he said he was like, well, if you're really serious about animation, there are three schools like three schools that are like the best option for you. And there's Sheridan college in Toronto. There's Cal arts in, in, uh, Northern California. And then there's Vancouver film school. Hmm. And I didn't get into the first two and, <laughs> but I got into Vancouver and, and, um, and I went and I was like, great, this is great. I'm going to graduate from Vancouver film school. I'll move back and work at star tunes. Yeah. And then in that year that I was in animation school, Warner Brothers Animation shut down its entire department. <laughs> oh, no. And, and Star Tunes closed. Aww. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess that's not the plan anymore. Well, and, and you think they would have had more of a backup business model or, uh, model or like, made more connections yeah, or something. Yeah, they were – I mean, they. It was it was sort of an overnight kind of thing, like – like Warner Brothers was doing a ton of animation and yeah. then they just like everything turned off. Cause if you remember like in the nineties, it was like pinky and the brain and Batman, the animated right. series and all that stuff was, it was huge. Yeah. Truthfully, so, pinky and the brain, I think was the downfall of it when they got their own series. It was kind of like, okay, we get it. It's like a one trick thing and it's really a, a an actual series based. Sorry. I didn't like right. pinky and the brain as much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it should have been limited to like their little five minute segment on the anime, exactly. not a whole series. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was so that didn't pan out. Um, those guys have since all gone on to do great things, and they're they're great guys. But they, yeah. uh, um, but yeah, that that was that sort of what was what's what that's what led me to animation was was that sort of course of action. I find it interesting that two of the major schools that he suggested were in Canada. That's interesting. I did I did not know that, to tell you the truth. Canada has a huge animation industry, and um, they seem to get a lot more funded animation out there too. Like the like if you see in a like it's a, a big production or like a classy. I want I hate to say classy production, but like something that looks like oh this was nominated for something. It'll be like. You know, funded by the Canada thing. Yeah, the the, the the film board. Yeah, the film national board. film board. There you go. They 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 have a ton of federal funding for okay. arts in yeah. Canada, and that's that's why hmm. there's a lot of animation there, and and it's great. I mean, Vancouver is just it's like teeming with studios, and my friends have all they they all seem to have done pretty well, um, working up there and getting consistent work and. I don't know. It seems like there's a lot of good good studios up there. Question for you. What's the weather like there in the winter? Is it really bad? Like, I mean, I'm in Wisconsin, so I get bad weather. But, like, is it no. any different? Wis Wisconsin's way worse. Really? So, because especially Vancouver, um, I mean, I, I don't I don't know Toronto or, or, or uh, Quebec all that well. But, okay. but uh, Vancouver is on the coast. So, it's just north of Seattle. So, it's it's super mild. Okay. That makes sense. See, I had no um, idea where it was located. <laughs> yeah, tons of tons of rain. Everything's really green. Uh, okay. And then they get snow, like a little bit of snow in the winter. Oh, that's right. That's where they film all the TV shows. I forgot yes. about that. Okay. Yeah. It's all coming together now. That makes a lot of – everything you're saying makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Having lived in both places – uh, Wisconsin is worse. <laughs> Wisconsin right. is much and harder. And I say that because it's it was like 13 degrees or like below zero or something here today. And today it's supposed to snow and it's just gray and cloudy out. And I'm just like, I wonder what Vancouver's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So what would you, what is the, I mean, get, getting an intern job at, uh, for Star Animation or, uh, is that what it was called? Star Animation? Star Tunes. Star, Star Tunes. Tunes. So that's obviously a big deal. But like, what would you say is the, a project that you got, like one of the biggest ones of note that you got to do that you basically brag about like one of the best projects you got to work on. I'd love to hear what like something really cool you got to work on was. And if you had to, and I'm not saying like, this is the, I, I'm going to just make this out for you. Like, sure. All of them are probably good, but like, what would you say? Here's one that will interest me. <laughs> Let's put it, put it on me. That way you don't feel guilty for like going, I'm saying this one's the best. Um. Well, I mean, the, the one that I think I'm proudest of, 
uh, is is behind the curve. It's on Netflix. It's it was. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, and it it got great reviews when it came out. Um, it it premiered at the Los Angeles Film Festival, and or well, I mean, it premiered. Its its international premiere was at Hot Docs in Toronto. Okay. Um, and it and it's played, uh, you know, all over the globe, uh, in in Australia and um. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's been really well received, and I think it 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 gives sort of a a really powerful insight into the, sort of these fringe communities, and it's not just you know a lot. I feel like a lot of documentaries about things of that nature uh, are sort of like like look at how weird these people are, right. and there's and there's you know some some of it is that some some of it is like there's there's some weird people but it's also like showing that there a lot of these people are just sort of looking for a community and you know feeling like outcasts and trying to trying to find a group that they can identify with mm-hmm. and and they've found that in this weird conspiracy theory online hmm. um and it's 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 a very nice and compassionate uh, film, and I, I'm I'm re- yeah I'm really proud to have been part of that. But and then the, I've got a there, there was another documentary that I worked on. The the editor of that one, Nick Andert um, of Behind the Curve, he hooked me up with a, a body of his, and I worked on um, animated sequences for a, a documentary about UFC, the the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Oh, okay, yeah. And it was sort of a, the same thing. They hired me to do animations for for this documentary that uh, you know just outlines how the the league was formed and 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 who the players were and, or who the fighters were and hmm. and how it all came together. And it was and it's a super interesting documentary that has not come out yet. Um, when is it supposed you know, to come out? Well, you know, they said it was going to be sometime in 2020, and then everything changed so right so who knows that that could be (laughs) the tagline they said it was going to be 2020 then everything changed (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) so i don't know i don't know when that will actually come out but it's um that's called ufc one colon origins okay so it's um yeah that's that was a fun doc to, to work on but um and 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 definitely, I'm de- I'm I'm definitely very proud of the work that I did on that one. But Behind the Curve was my first, and it and it was really pretty exciting to be involved in that. Yeah, it does sound familiar. I'm gonna have to check that out. You said it was on Netflix, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then um, one last thing I'd like to ask you too: Is there um, anything that you'd like to mention, or something coming up, or a project that you're currently doing, or that's going to be coming out that you'd like to mention to people, or just kind of share? So, well, I mentioned earlier, um, I work with uh, this uh, sketch comedian, stand-up and sketch comedian Joe Quizala. Yeah. Um, and we worked together doing um, uh, a series of, of sketches uh, a little while ago. And those are all on YouTube and Amazon and anywhere. Uh, and we're, we've been working on some more, and that'll be, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not sure what the release date of those will be, but it's it's that's going to be pretty pretty fun i think he's he's a very very funny guy and are you saying you're helping him write them or you're in them like how are you involved in no no, no. i'm 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 doing animation for it oh you're doing animation for it okay yeah i don't do uh on camera stuff that <laughs> <laughs> okay in the uh so you're animating those and that's that actually seems like such a natural thing to have comedians do like, I like it when comedians will be like, here's, here's a bit or here's something I did, but it's animated. And I kind of like the voices and the fact that you're able to go that thing they're talking about. You can kind of do a flash to, or just kind of add some sort of a side to it. I really like that. Well, and this, this is more like, like some of them uh, have like a heavy amount of animation and others have like, you know, animated title sequences or things like that. Uh, Just, just sort of animation and motion graphics elements to them. And the last time I did it, um, we we put together like a whole, uh, you know, I, I developed sort of um, a bunch of graphics and icons and, and a, like a color palette um, for sort of interstitials that would go between each sketch and, and sort of hold the whole thing together 
like a like a series. Huh. Yeah. So that was that was super fun, and and this new set is going to be just as fun, and cool. That's twenty twenty one, hopefully. <laughs> And if people wanted to check out your stuff, where could they go find more of what you do? Um, I would say the the most uh, the the best place to find me is on Instagram at, at uh, Mike Lloyd Art. Okay, and that's um, with two L's. Yes, two. For L's. some reason, every time I go to, when I was going to message you, I'd start typing it and I'd forget the second L, and I'd be like, "Why isn't he showing up in my search?" So, yeah, <laughs> that's that, just that me happens being stupid. to a lot of people. And <laughs> and uh, my website is likemoid.com. So I'm I like that, like Moid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad that I got a chance to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was fun. 